twice, didn't you? Okay, let's keep going. Another cone. Another cone. Silly. Okay, another cone and another sphere. No more knowledge. <laughs> nope. No more knowledge. You're done. You peaked in first grade, sister. <laughs> Yay, what do you have, sir? Wait, what was the first one? Yes. Yes. Beer. Yes. Beer. Uh -huh. Beer. 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 Spear and a cube. Yes, sir. Eat your candy if you wish. Here, let's pull out a pineapple here and see what we got. Mm. We have a cube. Did you get one too? Yeah. All right, what you got? Um, Which one? I figured it out. Hang on. Spear, a. Come on, Harper, you got know this. You got it. <laughs> Look up there. Look on the board. The very last one. I can't oh, see where the mummies live. Pyramid. Pyramid. Yay. And cylinder and a rectangular prism. Yeah, yeah. I got this. Are we all good? We all get one? Yay! Yeah. 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 Good morning, happy Monday. Welcome back. If you've never watched me or haven't watched me very long, my name is Jennifer and I'm a first grade teacher in central Missouri in a lake touristy area. So if you hear me talking about the traffic, you'll know what I'm talking about. And when Memorial Day hits, that's when the crazy of traffic begins around here. So I try to avoid this area if possible during the summer. I don't live here. I live about 25 minutes away in a smaller town. So I drive in and out every day with my daughter, who is a junior in high school this year. She goes to school across the other side of the city that I work in because our campus is split. We have the elementary school here, the lower L that has pre-K through two. And then across the campus, about 15 minutes away is everything else, the upper elementary, the middle school, and the high school. So anytime we have big meetings, we trek over there to the other side of campus. So welcome. I like to share my day with you and show you activities that are fun for my students and for me to teach. Welcome to Monday in my classroom. So I'm willing spring to come. It's like 40 degrees out today. Missouri has not gotten on the spring bandwagon yet, but the forecast shows like 70 some degrees on Wednesday and Thursday. So fingers crossed that we get some spring weather. We've been in the 40s and 50s for a while now and we even had snow over the weekend. Yes, snow, crazy. Anyway, let me get you started on our day. So I did my nails this weekend. And if you watched my weekend what's up, you saw that I did them in the car. Yes, super fun. Let me show you my outfit. I've got a tank top and a little sweater with short sleeves. I've got this little scarf that I got from the Target Dollar Spot around Valentine's time. And then I've got some leggings and some boots. I've got my Alex and Annie pineapple bracelet that I got for my birthday. I have this on that came from one of my little friends in my classroom. I have this little sparkly yellow ring that came from Walmart, so not really expensive. And these yellow hoops that came from Walmart, not really expensive. Let me back up and I'll show you everything and then I'll go through our day with you and let you know what we've been doing and what we're going to do.
Those of you that have watched me for a while know that I like to change my desks around. I do flexible seating, so you will only see eight desks in my classroom. I did have 20 students, now I am down to 18 because two students moved in the same week within days of each other. So we are down to 18 out of 20 now, but they get to choose to sit on a beanbag chair, on a rug, or on a mat if they like, or a cushion. Those are where they are kept, some of them. And over here is where I keep my bath mats. They can stretch out on the floor and work. I got that idea from Mr. Greg from the Kindergarten Smorgasbord. Here are the desks. Four here, four there. I did have them arranged differently last week. The kids came in and went, oh, they're different. <laughs> yeah, let's alleviate boredom. Plus we have like 30 days of school left, so we gotta keep it moving, friends. There's my reading table and my reading supplies and things. Okay, let me show you my leggings because you probably couldn't tell from that far back what they look like. We are going to be studying reptiles this week, and you know I love my themes, so I kind of dress in my themes too, just a little. I thought this kind of looked a little bit like reptile skin, kind of scaly. So here are my leggings. These are just from Walmart. Now I'll show you the side there. Doesn't that remind you of kind of like a reptile scale a little bit? Anyway, I kind of thought it did, so I got have that on. I did not get a chance to print my lesson plans earlier, which is why I thought I would just show you the teacher's what they call it now it's not really the workroom anymore because we have our own copiers and stuff but anyway I showed you copying that on the printer I printed the black and white down here this morning so I had something to look off because normally I have it just sitting there I was like uh I forgot what I was doing yeah so now I have the color ones so I could put them up here so I know what I'm doing all day got my plans all together all right so we started a new round of power hour and I'm teaching fractions, which is something we're going to be teaching in a few weeks. So that's kind of like the group of the kids that already know all the other stuff that we've taught. So we decided to kind of front load them, I guess. I don't know. This um, power hour is our RTI time. It's response to intervention. It's our intervention and remediation and enrichment time. So... We've been kind of uh, struggling our way through it this year because it's all new to us. We've done RTI time before, but we've never just really done it for math. We've done it for phonics and reading, but this is the first time we've done it for math. And it's the whole school that's doing it, not just our grade level. So everybody's doing it from 8.15 to 8.45, Monday through Thursday. Fridays we don't do it because it's our early release day and students leave at 2. And then teachers have um, PLC meetings after school. So that doesn't work to have it on those days because our schedule is much shortened. Everything is shorter. Anyway, so you saw our, um, I want to say fraction bingo. I got fractions on my brain now. You saw our shapes bingo game and that is linked below. So you can find it if you want to. And there are all kinds of different versions of that on Pinterest. Lots of free ones. I think that one was free too. I use so many resources, friends. I cannot remember for sure which were free and which were paid. I have hundreds of things from Teachers Pay Teachers from over the years because I've been using Teachers Pay Teachers almost as long as I've been teaching first grade. And this is my 10th year of first grade. So you do the math and you can see that I have lots of stuff to choose from. Sometimes I forget what I have. Very often I forget what I have. And I look on there and go, oh, that's really cool. And I click on it and I go, oh, I already own that. Awesome. <laughs> it's a nice surprise because then you don't have to pay for it. So on Thursday last week, I did not get to the Go Math lesson because the graphing that we did took so long. I had them graph their snack. We did a 3D Shapes snack graphing. We had kicks and cheese balls. We had pretzels and marshmallows. We had cheese cubes. And we had bugles. So the only shape that we didn't have that we've been discussing is a rectangular prism. And that's just because it's hard to find that shape in food. I asked for those chocolate graham sticks that Keebler makes, but there was a miscommunication and, and we got graham crackers, which are technically graham sticks. So they did get the thing that I asked for. It just wasn't what I was thinking. 
So I said, that's okay, friends. We just won't do rectangular prisms. That's all right. We'll just use that for our 2D shape snack. And they're like, yay. So we've, we've got lots and lots of graham crackers, which is good. They love graham crackers. They're yummy. And they're not too bad for you. So because of the graphing taking so long, because they had to sort out their shapes. First, they told me which food was which shape. Then they had to sort them all out. Then they had to count them all. Then they had to graph them all. Then they had to answer all the questions about everything. <laughs> So yeah, that took a little while. So we did not get to the actual Go Math lesson in the book, which is fine because I just tacked it on to today's lesson. I did split them out on my lesson plan page, but I realized it was going to be really short. And so I just went ahead and combined them because then we'll have more time for review for the test. So I'm planning on giving the test on Wednesday. So tomorrow we'll just do some shapes review things. And I'm going to go to Walmart tonight and get some foam blocks. I saw some over the weekend when I was shopping. And I really wish I would have bought them then. They were like $12 for a pack of those foam shapes. Because the ones I have, there aren't enough. I want them to be able to get into groups of like four, probably. A, cup, a few groups of four and a few groups of five. Yeah, that'd be two groups of four, two groups of five would give us 18, right? Yeah, that's the math. And I want them to be able to build me some composite shapes out of the shapes that they have. So that was one of the skills they were supposed to be able to do. They were supposed to be able to put shapes together and then make another shape like it. And they're also supposed to be able to have shapes that are already put together and tell me what shapes made up that big shape. So I want them to be able to build that. So I'm going to group them up tomorrow. And I'm going to have them come up with a cool shape and then just kind of leave it out. And then students will walk around and I think I'll just number them and they'll write what shapes that whole shape was made of. So one of our lessons was um, just going to make up somebody. Ben made this bridge. What shapes did Ben use to make his bridge? Circle the shapes. And they had the different shapes over here on the paper. And they just had to look and go, oh, it looks like he had two cylinders and he had two, he had a rectangular prism and he had a cone on top. So they circled the shapes. I want them to be able to do that with actually building them themselves. So it'll be kind of like a shapes building scoot activity. I think they'll really enjoy that. And I don't have that on my lesson plans because I just came up with that today as I was teaching and realized that I did not need to draw out this other lesson until tomorrow that we could just get it done and be done with our book. So the only thing left in our book for this chapter is the review. And so I tore out the rest of their pages and sent them home. And we'll do our chapter review. Oh, you know what? We're going to do our review on Wednesday and take our test on Thursday. But if we get our review done really well, we might go ahead and do the Go Math test on Wednesday after the review test because it's very simple. It really is. I think it's very simple. I even told them today, you guys already know how to do everything. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. I have the shapes on the board in case you didn't see that before. Let me show you. Look over there. On the bottom of my tray, you see all the little foamy shapes along the bottom. Yeah. And I've labeled them with dry erase marker above the shape so they could match them up. So when they're working on things, they can go, oh, yeah, that's the cylinder. That's what that's called. On Wednesday, I have that we're going to make 3D shapes. We might just do that tomorrow. Because to do that and to do the review and the test, that would take a lot of time. So I think I will move that up to tomorrow. I think that would be a good idea. Give them time to create their shapes. And then them building the things with their foam shapes won't take much time at all. But they would really like to have examples of their shapes, I'm sure. So I need to get that copied. <laughs> I need to print that out. That's something I need to do. I'll be doing that very soon. And also, I need to eat a little bit of something because I'm kind of fading here. Yeah. So for fractions in my enrichment group, which they're on grade level. They're not higher than grade level in this group anyway. Um, I started off... With the YouTube version of the story, Give Me Half, from Stuart Murphy, who does all those math, what are they called? Math start stories. I have a ton of those. I'm like, like 20 or 25 of those. They're awesome. And also, we did Holy Cow, Fractions Are Fun, which is really cute. And it talks about different cows on the farm. And this cow, half of him is, or part of him is painted blue. The other part is painted red. What fraction is painted blue what fraction is painted red and so they got it talked about halves thirds and fourths and fifths halves thirds fourths and fifths which is good in first grade they only need to do halves and fourths but I always 
make sure they understand what a fraction is, they understand what a numerator is, they understand what a denominator is, and they know what those numbers stand for. So they could really, when they're done, do any fraction. I say, guys, once you've learned how to do fractions, you can do millionths of something because you know that a fraction is a part of a whole. That's all that is. So you could have 10 49ths, you could have 67 millionths. It doesn't matter. You just have to know how many pieces are in the hole and how many you're taking out. That's my little alarm to heat my lunch. And since I heated my lunch on Friday and didn't eat it because I got a hamburger out of the kitchen instead, it won't take very long to heat that because it's not frozen. It's just refrigerated, so that won't take very long. I'm thinking maybe two and a half minutes is going to do my lunch today. Normally frozen, it's four and a half, so I think that would probably be good. My nails are holding up pretty well so far. So I did put these on Saturday in the car, and I didn't glue them. I just used the sticky back that was on them that's kind of like rubber cement a little bit. These are kid nails from Dollar Tree. Yeah. So these two sets of fingers don't have glue. They just have the sticky goo on them because they were not bumping off. So I just left them like that. These I glued because they were sliding off. So I glued them this morning. So they're on really well. I thought, hey, if I can get away with not having to glue these today, that'd be great. It's easier on your nails. So I'm going to get to work and I'll check back in with you later. How cute is this? The kids are going to play this tomorrow. I threw that in. I don't think that was even on my plans. Nope. Because I found it after I made my plans and I guess I didn't stick it on there. Yeah, no. This came... I want to say it came from Life Overseas. Yep, Life Overseas. And it's a C. Not like the C, but the letter C. Life Overseas. So I think I linked it. I'm pretty sure I did. You just have to like sign up for her newsletter and then she emails it to you. So free. Just use the paper clip. I gave you a tutorial on that last week. I would put these in a sleeve. You don't have to do them in color, but I would use them again. So I will be using these handed and sleeves. I am going to eat my lunch and figure out what else I need to print. Alrighty, I will check back with you later and let you know how things are going. Oh, this afternoon we're going to be talking about, oh, you know what? I printed the same page twice. How silly is that? Hmm. I'll be fixing that so that I can grab it when I go up to get the kids because my lesson plans are the same two pages twice. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, so I know what I'm doing the first half of the day, but not the second half. But I have the black and white, so it's okay. And this one got a little wet, so he's going to be recycled. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we're going to be talking about reptiles this week. And I have those turtle shells. And the kids are going to be learning the characteristics of reptiles. And I need to see if the librarian ever laminated my papers. Because I would really like them to put up on the board so I can compare the different animal groups. Yeah, I'll have to check on that too. In all my spare time. I could do that at recess though. All right, I will check back with you later and let you know how things are going. Today's lunch is brought to you by Healthy Choice. Cafe steamers, sweet sesame chicken. From freezer to microwave, four and a half minutes. Then you just dump it into the sauce, mix it up, throw a little salt on there. Mm-mm, good. Hi. It is recess time, and I finally got all my little recess buddies outside. Just in time to go pick them up again. Because they needed to get their writing done first. And some of them goofed around, and I'm like, you got to get it done before you go outside. Work first, then play. So, yeah, they're learning. I can't goof around if I want to still get to have all the fun. Some of them got done really fast, and some of them kind of really dinked around, and they didn't get to have as much recess time today. As a matter of fact, one kiddo just kept talking, and so he didn't get much time at all. And I'm like, well, maybe next time you won't talk as much, you'll get your work done first. Because you can talk at recess and have lots of fun doing that. All right. I swung by the library, and my posters were done. So now I have my mammal one and my reptile one. Unfortunately, there's a wrinkle in it, but it'll work. Yeah. Kind of a bummer. It happens frequently with the school animation. We got our rabbit writing all but the last final copy done because we did it all together. I told them to look for interesting facts in their rabbit book 
and then to share them out. And so we did, and I wrote down some of them. I was trying to teach them how to kind of take notes, like an abbreviated version. I was teaching them to do just, just the facts, man, not the whole sentence. So that's hard. That's hard. I said, we don't want to copy what the author wrote because then we're like taking their words and we want to write it in our words because they already wrote the interesting information. We need to write down just a piece to remind us what it was and then put it in our own words later. So everybody has their organizer done. We have the introduction. We have the closing. They just aren't going to have to write it all out on their rabbit paper tomorrow. And then they will get to make their rabbit to go with it on Wednesday. And then we'll be done with rabbits and we'll move on. Cool. I'm going to go get my kids, and we're going to learn about reptiles. Hey, it's the end of the day, and I'm just getting myself together here. So I copied those uh, 3D shapes things on different Elster Brides. They're going to be so cool. Taking one of each home to make examples with. I've got copies from my other teacher that's doing fractions with me, and I am needing to cut these that go with the equals one half and equals one third. I think, yes, tomorrow we're doing fourths, so I feel like I need to find something that talks about fourths to go along with it, because I don't think those two little activities are going to take very long, and we have a good 25 minutes, so I need to figure it out, yeah. There's that little deal. I still need to cut my fraction books apart in all my spare time. I just want to get this done before I left. We have a paper slicer. It does not like me very well, so I just cut them with my scissors because it's just easier. There are several little fraction books on YouTube, like Equal Schmequel. I have some fraction books in my little fraction. In. I do not feel like cutting all these right now. I just don't. So I'm putting them right there. No scissors, because I can do it in the morning. Oh, these are shapes, not fractions. I think I have a fractions tub too. Yeah, this is all about shapes. Triangles. Oh, here's Captain Invincible in the space shapes. That is so fun. Yeah, these are all about just shapes. I need to get my fraction box out. Let me see if I can go find that real quick. All right, jackpot, look. Magnetic apple fractions. And I have two of these. So I need to figure out where the other one is. Because I could loan this to my other teacher friend. Halves. Whole. Thirds. Fourths. I just got this from Amazon. I'll try to link it below so you can find it too. I forgot about this. Here's my awesome fraction tub. Look at that. Fractions. All right. Here's this, but a prettier version. Then here's the story that we did today. And we're doing this paper tomorrow because it's halves and fourths. Oh, here's the other story that we saw today. Holy cow. Fractions are fun. We've done this before with Skittles. I'll probably do that with my class, but not with the whole group. Spin a fraction is a cute game. Um, make it fair. We did this today. Let's see what's in this jump kangaroo jump. I'm not sure that has to do with fractions. Oh, it has to do with fourths. Oh, look at there. Count off into four teams. All right. This is also thirds. Should read that. Apple fractions, which goes with my apples. We'll do that. What else do I have in here? Fraction action. If you were a fraction. What else? Oh, here's a fraction spinner game. Yep. M&M fractions, name fractions, shoe fractions. We're going to be doing that. Shoe fractions. That's fun. Where everybody compares their shoes. Sandwich fractions. These are the pages we did today, like the half and stuff. I just have all kinds of stuff in here. And then there's a frog pond fraction thing, which is good for a small group, but not good for a whole class. You could probably find this on Amazon. Imagine. It's 
got little fractional pieces. I'm not sure I've ever, I don't remember playing this. I got this from a teacher that was retiring, I believe. I don't think I ever used it. Seemed like a good idea at the time. I'm sure it'd be great fun if I could ever get a chance to use it. Maybe I could play it at my table, the teacher table. Okay, let's just leave these little gems out. And I'll check them out tomorrow. Put these back in here. Because we used to teach fractions earlier than we do now, so. I don't think this was, oh yeah, this was in here. Getting confused with what I got out for my class and what I got out for this. All right, I think I'm all set. I'm gonna take this home. I really would like to cut these, but. Oh, I got my phone. Oh, I plugged it in because it was about to die. The battery is not lasting as long on that phone as it used to. Done. Yes. Now these won't be hanging over my head tomorrow. I'm going to grab my stuff, dump my cups, and get out of here. So I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Guess what comes out today? So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you didn't see my post this morning. But the greatest showman comes out on DVD today, people. Run, do not walk to your nearest shopping establishment and pick it up. It is phenomenal. If you have not seen it, you're missing out. It's got awesome music, and I'm sure some of it is very dramatized, but that's a movie for you. It's very entertaining and good, so I would highly recommend you watch it. Okay, that little plug is gone. I'm not getting anything for that. Just my personal experience and love for the music and for the movie. So this girl pre-ordered it on Amazon, so it will be here Waiting on my steps when I come home today from my doctor's appointment. Yeah, yeah. Gives me something to look forward to on a kind of a meh kind of Tuesday. There's no, nothing really wrong with Tuesday. It's just kind of there. It's not hump day. It's not Monday. And it's definitely not Friday. It's just kind of there in between. It's like the middle child that gets ignored. Poor thing. Anyway, happy Tuesday. Today, I am sporting some fancy leggings to go with our reptiles unit so i'll show you those in a moment i have a peach colored short sleeve shirt so i can peel the layers off if i get warm enough I have this little like it's kind of like a sweatshirt material jackety thing i've got this scarf that i got from old navy this came from maurice's yes my leggings came from amazon i will always link things below if i can my shirt came from maurice's long ago and far away i have some suede like boots on from maurice's i have a lottie dotties ring with a little insert which isn't that pretty yeah, the insert's really cool. And my cute little Dollar Tree kid nails. I peeled the sticky goo off them and I glued everything down except my pinkies because the pinkies are doing fine. So I'm not going to mess with it. If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? I got some bracelets here from Kato and Maurice's, I believe. I think it's combo. And then this is my Alex and Andy pineapple bracelet kind of intermingled. The earrings are from Maurice's. just thought they were cute. And it kind of goes with the Paisley's. And you'll see why I put this with my outfit when you see the rest of it. So let me back up so you can see the full meal deal. Then I'll let you know what we've been doing and what we're going to do. All right, let me give you a little more close-up of my pants. Because I'm wearing, ba-boom, chameleons. Aren't they cute? The kids were super excited. They love my new leggings. They look to see what I'm wearing and they like to feel the leggings because they're usually super soft. Most of the leggings that I get from Amazon are from a Leggings Depot. They are awesome. They're only like $12 or $13 depending on the size that you get. And they're super soft. And if you have prime shipping, they come in two days. How can you beat that? And you don't have to leave your couch. It's amazing. We were finished with chapter 11 in our Go Math book. So I was like a day ahead and I'm not going to test until Thursday. That's what I have in my plans and I can do some like, you know, extension activities until then because the kids are really loving it. So I will insert the activity that I did with them today because they loved it. Give kids something to build with and they will go to town. A lot of conversing going on there. A lot of standards being met. A lot of speaking and listening skills happening. A lot of cooperative learning going on. A lot of critical thinking going on. So, really, really cool.
right, we're going this way. You go there, you guys go there. Did you guys get your shapes counted for number six? Awesome. Did you count your shapes for number one? You did? Okay. Yep. Look behind, too. There's some back here. Yeah, I am. They're all over the place, aren't they? The little page I made to go with it, I'll share it. I just typed it up in PowerPoint and slapped it on there. It doesn't even have fancy fonts. I might fancy it up for you because I just, seriously, as the kids were building, I was typing it up. I'm like, oh, I want to do a gallery walk. That would be cool, too. This was seriously something I came up with last night in my head. And it wasn't on my plans, as you can see if you've already looked at my plans. Not on there. So that was just something extra to do. All right. I need to get a lot of things copied for tomorrow because I'm a little behind on my copying. Because I have I keep throwing more stuff in because I just want to. You know, it's fun. It's keeping the kids engaged and learning and exploring. And they love it. And it's reinforcing what we've learned. Some of it's review. Some of it's new. So it's really, really good. I wish I could... That's interesting. I just find all kinds of randomness on my desk. That's going in the trash. I don't even know where it came from. I took a sit spot off the floor because we don't have 20 students anymore. We only have 18. And that one was kind of in a weird random spot anywhere where I had to be careful not to step on the person. Plus, they were around the corner. It just wasn't a good place. So, yeah. I found a smushed York peppermint patty in my drawer when I was looking for this because I use this to signal when to switch for the shapes activity. So, I might peel this out of the wrapper and eat it because I need some chocolate. Oh yeah, sometimes a girl just needs a little chocolate. Ugh. All right. I think I showed you this yesterday. It was from Life Overseas. Yes. So I just printed them out and put them in a sleeve. And on the back side, oh yes I did. I put something on the back. I put the Shapes Bingo that we did yesterday because I just had the black and white yesterday and I thought, I'll use that again next year. Let's make it nice. So it's on there, ready to go. I've got my You Are Turtle copies made. I just need to put them on colored paper now because be, they'll be pretty. You will see these. We're going to make them on Thursday. So you'll see this on Thursday's vlog. So stay tuned. So I'm getting that prepared for Thursday adventures. Today, I told you about the shapes activity and you'll, you will have seen it by now because I should have inserted it. What else did I do? Mm, for power hour, I showed you yesterday before I left that I had found my magnetic apple fractions and my apple fractions book. Let me show you. Here is the apple fractions book. And instead of just reading it to the class, I showed the YouTube version so that they could all see it a lot easier. And then I had this up there too. And they're like, you have the book? And I'm like, yeah. I do try to have the book of the thing that I show because I almost feel like it's like, copyright infringement you know because someone's just reading they sometimes these people that read these books didn't even buy the book they got it from the library because you can see the library code here and I feel a little iffy about that because that means that the author of that book didn't get anything from those people making the YouTube video so I feel kind of bad so most of the things I show that are on a YouTube video I have the actual book from it I just wanted the class to see it better then I have these. These are from Amazon. I think I showed these yesterday. But it goes perfectly, perfectly with this book. It's the same colors and the same fractions. It's amazing. And the kids were like, oh, those are so cool. And I even had like another teacher come in because she didn't have a group. She's one of our, um, she's a speech teacher. And she comes in and helps us with our power hour, our math intervention time. And she came in, she goes, would you like some help? And I said, we'd love you to come join us in Fraction Land. And she goes, ooh, Fraction Land. I said, please join us. We would love to have you. So anyway, this book goes along with halves, fourths, and thirds, and wholes. And seriously, the apples in the magnetic fraction, uh, yeah, the magnetic apple fractions, I can speak are exactly the same as in the book. So the whole is a red apple. A Macintosh. Oh my goodness, they're falling apart. <laughs> so they're not really super strong, Magus. They're just enough to hold it together when you hold it, and then you can pull them apart pretty easily. But isn't that cool? It, Like I said, it totally matches the book. Totally. The little yellow, the golden delicious is in thirds. I even said, okay, friends, if I gave you each a piece of this apple, would you feel like you got a fair share? They're like, yeah. And then the Granny Smith apple is in fourths. Isn't that cool? And it has little seeds. Isn't that awesome? They thought these were the bomb.com. Not even kidding. And as an extension to this, 
I gave them die cut apples and I don't think, let me see if I can find one. I'll be right back. Okay, we have a die cut machine at our school that makes different shapes. You wouldn't have to use a die cutter. It just made it easier. I already had these. I just had them in one of my math drawers because I've used apples for something at the beginning of the year with a lesson. I think it was a graphing lesson or something. I don't even know anymore. But look, same colors. Mm -hmm. Halves, thirds, fourths. So I randomly gave students a different colored apple and I had written on the board. I wish I would have videoed that before I erased it all because <laughs> I put a lot of work on there. My Expo marker was the same color as my apple except for the yellow. I used blue because yellow doesn't show up very well. So I wrote in red for the red one. I wrote in blue for the yellow one. I wrote in green for the green one. And I said, okay, this is two pieces, halves, one half, one half. And I did that for each thing. Then I also drew a circle because I did not get a drawn apples. I drew a circle and I showed them with dotted lines how they're going to use their pencil and partition whatever apple they got into the amount of pieces for that particular apple. So some students got halves, some students got thirds, some students got fourths. And then after they had figured out with their pencil marks how exactly they want it to be equal, then they got to cut them and I had them label each piece halves, thirds, and fourths. And they got to show me that. And then we did that little paper. Oh, I found an apple that a student left behind. So, I don't know if I can put it back together, but, oh, he even labeled it one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, because we talked about what those would be. I'm not sure how this goes together, because it doesn't look quite, oh, yeah, here we go. I don't think I can hold this together. I will try. He did a really nice job, but he left it on the floor. I'm like, oh, he didn't take it with him. Anyway, he labeled them. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. You can't really see behind my finger, but you can kind of get the gist anyway. So it's not completely equal, but they're first graders. So I was not unhappy with the product that they produced. Then we did this. We didn't have time to finish it, but that's okay because I wanted them to spend time on the apples. I want them to really understand the pieces, but we probably got the first four done, which is good enough. And I didn't even get that page of fourths finished at all. We didn't even start on it. So we'll just do it tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Alrighty, so this was super cool. I will link these below and I'll link the video. I've been trying to link the video and the book on Amazon in case you want the actual book to have in your hand like I do. I like to put this on the board, like on the tray of the board. And then as I'm showing the video, they know that I have the book of it. I don't know, I just, I just feel better that way. Yeah, plus I can also go back and refer to pages. Like if I go, oh yeah, I wanna show them that. So. After we watched the story on the board, then I got out the apple fractions and I rewound the video to the different parts in the book where it talked about halves. So I stopped on that page on the board, got out my apple that's in halves and talked about it. I did the same with the other ones. Found the page with the thirds, got out the thirds. Found the page with the fourths, got out the fourths. We even talked about, this book talks about numerator and denominator. I always like the students to know the vocabulary behind the math. That way it's not foreign to them. And the more they hear it, the easier it is to stick in their brains. Well, it doesn't want to stop. There we go. Okay. Got that done. Ooh. I may put those little paper apples in the box with the fractions so I remember to do that next time. I need to put these back in a minute. And put that with it too. All right. Good deal. I get a bag to put it in. I'll be all set. Bada bing, bada boom. Done. Okay. This afternoon, what are we doing? We're finishing up our rabbit reports. So yesterday we did three awesome facts about rabbits. Then we filled a graphic organizer out, putting those facts into sentences and writing an introduction and a closing. Now all the students are going to need to do is take that awesome graphic organizer, take the rabbit writing paper and write it down in order. They just copy it off their graphic organizer. Should be easy peasy lemon squeezy. We shall see. I'll let you know later how it went. Because <laughs> sometimes my 40 plus year old brain thinks something's going to be cake. And the kids think it was like cutting steak with a spoon. It was super hard for them. So I'm just like, uh, I misjudge that a lot. Just depends on your group. Some groups just fly with stuff and other groups struggle through things. It's okay. Then for science, we're studying reptiles this week, and today we will be doing the scholastic news about tortoises and also reading this book. Sorry, I've got stuff down here. 
Where are you? Here it is. Lizard. Oh, Reptile Park. So this is from the My Day at the Zoo series. They have these on Amazon. I found them all. So I'll be sure to link them. I have no idea what that note's all about. <laughs> no idea. I will link these books below so you can find them. Because it's always nice to be able to find the materials if you like what you see. I passed around the turtle shells yesterday. There were two of them. I'll show you. One. Two. I talked about how lizards have a backbone and they could actually see the backbone in the turtle shells. They thought these were super, super cool. And I have a friend who loves turtles. So I knew that he would be all over this with delight. And he was. He's like, oh, oh, I said, I know. I have been waiting. I said, I know. I've been waiting to show you this. I'm so excited that you really like this. So, yep. And I don't have, like, a regular, like, stuffed animal turtle. But I do have a sea turtle that I could show them, which is right here. I've got stuff all over the place down here. It's crazy. I have a lovely sea turtle that I could show them. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's a turtle. Yeah, it's still a reptile. But I'm going to do a whole ocean thing too, I hope. I hope I have time. Time's a ticking away and I'm losing time. So, ah, trying to cram it all in. Yes. I just keep adding things and adding things when I make my plans. And I'm, I'm making a lot more work for myself than I have to do. But it's something I want to do with the kids and for the kids. I want them to get these extra experiences and this extra knowledge about things that we don't necessarily have to teach these particular things to get those skills. But they would enjoy it. Like, what kid doesn't like to learn about animals? It's a no-brainer. It's automatic engagement, friends. They want to know about animals. They want to know where they live, where they sleep. Um, what kind of characteristics do they have? Are they warm-blooded? Are they cold-blooded? Where do they live? What do they do? So, they love it. Um, so, yeah, that's the end of our day. And uh, then I'll be pooped and want to go home, but I have a doctor's appointment, which won't take very long. And then I'll get to go home and find my awesome movie. Woo! And I don't know if we'll get to see it tonight. I'm hoping. We might have to save it till Friday for pizza and movie night. I don't know. I'd be happy to watch it twice. I'm good with that. Yeah. Or I might fall asleep on the couch. I don't know. I'm super, super proud of myself. So over the weekend, I already got my weekend what's up done and scheduled to go up tomorrow. Yeah. Awesome. Of course, by now, you will have already known because you've already seen it or it's already up. Whether you watched it or not. I split it into two this time. I split Saturday and Sunday up because Saturday I did like a shopping with me thing. Not everybody's into watching shop with me's and that's okay. I get it. And then the other one I made a plan with me because not everybody's into plan with me. So I thought if you like to watch the Wednesday what's up for the shopping interesting things. If you like to watch the Wednesday blah. If you like to watch the weekend what's ups because of the shopping and the things that I find. If you like to watch the weekend what's ups because of seeing what I find when I shop or online or in stores. There you go. If you like to watch to see what I'm planning and to check out my materials. There you go. They're split now. That way you can see what you want. And also the shopping one was kind of long. So I didn't want to add on to it anymore because it's already pretty long. Anyway, that's why I did that. And I don't know if I'll do that all the time. But there really wasn't anything going on Sunday other than planning and just couch potatoing. Because I was pooped. So that's why I didn't put it together too. Because there really wasn't much else to talk about on Sunday. Alrighty, I am going to go because it is almost lunchtime. And I'm going to heat my lunch and figure out what I need to do still on my lesson plans to get copied. I think I have pretty much everything ready. But I want to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row. Because it is Tuesday. And Wednesday is going to come super fast. And then the week will be half over. And I'll be like, ha, ah, what am I doing? So yeah. Oh, I do have my newsletter done too. I got that done over the weekend. I didn't show that. But I got it done. Yeah. Really, really cool. It's nice to have that done. And I can print it out. So yeah, I'm going to check my lesson plans. That's why I keep looking over this direction. My lesson plans are over on this side here. Checking that and seeing if I need to make something for tomorrow. I think I've got my power hour stuff ready. I do have that for the rest of the week. Yep. And I have the assessments printed for everything. I think I'm good. I need to make this turtle thing. I need to print. No, 
I've printed out the Alright, I've got this that I need to get colored paper and make thing, the pieces colored. I've got this, the template, and I need to print it on something. Because I think the bunny, does it say what color the bunny is? Just says rabbit head and ears. Could be white. Might just be white. Oh, I think I'm going to print this again. Look at all the lines that it printed. Can you see that? Look, here and here. Our copier just randomly makes really cruddy copies. So I'm going to reprint that because I don't want their little craft thing to have lines in it. Look, that'll be scrap paper. Yeah. That'll be okay because it's obviously not doing that now. I printed this yesterday, so it's not still making those lines. All right, so I need to grab the colors that I want to make my turtle pieces because I like I make them on Astrobrite so they're vivid. And my bunny... I made a bunny last year and I don't remember what colors. I think I made him gray. Anyway, I'll look on here because I think it shows the way she did it. It's probably also going to have to do with the fact of what colors I have in my drawer. Yeah, because I don't have time to go to the art room. And I think that our teacher may not be here anyway. So I don't want to go in there if there's a sub because they won't know what to tell me. Anyway, oh, that's my heat, my lunch alarm. So I'm going to go get things done and I'll check back in with you later and let you know how things are going. I wanted to show you the 3D shapes that we're going to make. We just ran out of time. I was explaining all of them to the kids and how they have to be so precise when they cut and they can't cut their pieces off and show them exactly where to cut on each shape. My kids are at recess right now and they need to pick them up soon, but I thought I'd pop on and let you know that those 3D shapes were a little difficult, <laughs> but we did get them done. And I will insert a picture of them right here. The kids had a blast making them. They were a little frustrated at times, but I did help them. Some of them I had to go around and tape because they just would not stick with the glue stick. But for the most part, it worked pretty well. They're taking them home and they're so excited. We didn't get very much of our rabbit writing done today. They wrote the introduction on their nice paper and then they turned it in and went to recess. So we'll finish it tomorrow and they'll get to make their little rabbit craft too. I've got it all copied ready to go. I got my UART turtle ready to go. Welcome new subscribers. I appreciate you jumping over here and joining us in the life of a first grade teacher and her friends. I'm going to have to get packed up super fast today because my daughter will come get me. We'll zoom to a doctor's appointment then go home and hopefully watch that awesome new movie. Woohoo! I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to tell you, but we're going to be looking at the Scholastic News that's about tortoises, and my friend that loves turtles is going to be over the moon excited. I'm glad. So we'll talk about those. We'll read that Day at the Zoo book that's about reptiles, and we'll pack and get ready to go, and that'll be our day. So in case I don't check back in with you later, I will say goodbye, and I will see you in the morning, and if I can get a chance to chat with you later I will so until then ta-ta hi I made it to the end of the day Whew. I'm breaking into that peppermint patty I found I made these for my co-workers on one of our PD days like long a long time ago like August or September we were meant to be a team we complement each other well love Jen yeah see that and it's just one of those little peppermint patties time to break into it because I'm needing some chocolate are everyone's kids just crazy loud? Yeah. I think I need to invest in Tylenol. Like, like actually like put some of my money into the Tylenol company because I'm pretty sure I'm supporting them anyway. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The amount of loud that ensues in this classroom at any given time is just crazy. And what's so funny is yesterday. I stepped out to um, tell a teacher something across the hall. When I came back, my AP was in here. And he, I came in and I said, hi, good morning. And he goes, wow, look at this class. Look how focused they are. Look how quietly they're working and look how responsible they're being. And I was like, yeah. And I went to go, whose class is this? Because I was like, wow, guys, you picked a great time to show your awesomeness. <laughs> I'm so happy you weren't being crazy and hurting each other. That was good. 
they were they were working really well and honestly in the mornings they do really well it's just when it gets to be after lunch time they're just and i think it's because sorry i'm breaking into my chocolate it's all sticky Ugh. i think it's because they haven't been outside yet our recess is not until 1 30. that is a long stretch now we have we have um, learn, 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 and then 10.30 is specials time, but they don't get outside for that, and not every specials time is going to be moving around. That's only one time a week mostly, and sometimes two when they have PE, because our specials rotate every four days. So our special schedule is art, music, PE, library, and it just keeps rotating, rotating, rotating. So today was library, so they didn't get to run around. Yesterday was run around day in PE. Yeah, and then, um, sorry, I'm checking to see if my daughter has texted to say she's here. So they don't get a lot of runaround time except at recess at 1.30. And that's like almost pointless <laughs> at this time of the year. Because, man, are they done sitting around. I never even got water today. Holy moly. And I didn't drink my iced coffee. I don't think I showed you my awesome cup. Fabulous called I Answered. I show this in my shopping vlog that I did on Saturday. But I didn't show you that I brought it to school. So this is my iced coffee mug. It's not so iced anymore, but it's still really good. So I'll be drinking that in the car on the way home. And I'm going to load up my computer here. I do not need to take anything home tonight to work on. Except I don't have my scholastic order sent in. Because I have all those coupons and I want to take anything that was $5 or less and use a coupon for it instead of like, duh, paying for it or using my points because I have all those coupons saved up. But I'm going to do that. With. Grabbing my keys. Get my lunch bag. My lunch bag. And my awesome pineapple that my daughter found me. This is the scholastic thing that's been going back and forth with me since Friday because I thought, oh, I'll do that over the weekend. I didn't do that over the weekend. I tried. I did get my order in that I wanted, but I didn't transfer over which things I want to get. So I wanted to show you that I cleaned up the mess of 3D shapes back here. So check it out. Oh, floor space. I actually do have floor space. I need to put away my Easter tub. <laughs> Probably time for that, yeah. But I do have stuff in there I can use for chicks. Because the eggs are in people's classrooms in the incubators. So yay. Hi. It is Tuesday evening and it's like 5 o'clock. I want to show you what I'm making for supper. Because my husband will be home around 6. So it's not quite time to start these. But I've already got sweet potatoes ready to kind of like bake in the microwave. You just bake them for about 10 to 12 minutes. I flip them halfway and they turn out really good. So soft and yummy. And then I've got chicken breast in here. And I just covered it with foil. See that yumminess? Mm, mm, mm. So I just took two chicken breasts and I cut them in half. I trimmed the fat off. I cannot stand all the gunk on the chicken. And I seasoned it with some crazy salt. Let me show you what that looks like. This I love because it has all kinds of seasonings in it. And then just some pepper. And some Eva Italian dressing. Just bake it like at 425 for like 30 minutes. Make sure it's good and done. And since I've cut the chicken breast in half, it should be done by then. So yum. That's what we're having for supper. And there's some green bean casserole that my husband made for Easter that we're going to try to finish off. If it's still good. We'll check it. I think it's still good. And then I thought I'd show you how to cut the pool noodle to make those awesome mallets for the Wacka Word game. So that's coming up next. Okay, by my measurements, you can get 12 little tops for your mallets out of these pool noodles. I have two pool noodles. And I have these pencils from Dollar Tree. And I've got some already out. Aren't they cute? They're kind of sparkly. And then I thought I would put the eraser side in because maybe it will grip better. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to puncture it with the end of this pen cap. And I just have my kitchen knife as a Santoku knife because you can wash it. It's not like these are going to grunge up your knife. And I've got my awesome mug from Lynn Daniel from the Putty Zone. And my English breakfast tea that I love to have any time of day. Okay. Whoop. Pikachu's saying hello. Back up, buddy. <laughs> 
So I'm just gonna take my noodle. You can't even see what I'm doing. Here, let's get down here. There's a better view. Okay, so I'm taking my pool noodle. <laughs> Whacking Pikachu in the head with it. I'm gonna cut them about that long, I think. I think that'll make a decent mallet. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. So you just... See, they slice really easily. And then you can use this to measure the rest of them. So I'm going to get cutting and then I'll show you the rest. I actually got 14 of these because I measured a little differently this time. And they're roughly three inches wide or they are just about exactly eight centimeters. So three inches are basically eight centimeters wide. And then you're just going to pick a point sort of in the middle and kind of make a little bit of a hole. Kind of <laughs> bore a little bit of a hole. And then I'm going to take my eraser and poke it through there. But you don't want to poke through the end. And then there you go. Now to make them even sturdier, you could put hot glue in here too. And I will tell you that um, my pool noodles aren't all exactly like completely straight on both sides. It's not going to be a complete straight 90 degree angle, <laughs> you know, like this. Because pool noodles are curved and the, the kids are not going to care, honestly. They're just going to enjoy whacking stuff. So that's what you're going to do. My kids were trying to erase with the eraser side. So I decided let's just do it this way. And you can even put like some fancy tape around this to make a handle a little bit more grippy. But that's how easy it is. I'm going to cut my orange ones now and then get these made and show you what they look like when they're done. My two end ones are just slightly shorter barely shorter because I had this much left and I thought I'm not going to cut off and have like that much left or this much left. I'll just cut it in half to make 14. So I have an even 14. This is what I had left of the green one. <laughs> Made like a little donut. So I've got 14 of each color. I've got 14 green and I've got 14 orange. So now I'm just going to get the pencils stuck in here. So they'll stay. And I'll get back all with you. Right. Success. Look at all these awesome things. So we've got green and blue and purple and orange and red and green and green and orange. Yay. For our smacking pleasure. So I've got 24 of these lovelies all over the place here. I'll show you. Look at there. You know, everywhere. All over the place. Yes, I was supervised by cats to be sure that I did not make a mistake. And they did a great job because they turned out very well. So those will be going to school tomorrow. And I will be printing out the color mats tomorrow, putting them on some construction paper, I'm hoping, and getting them laminated. We'll see if I can get that pulled off. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so we'll see. I'm hoping that will happen. And I'll have to get them back from the library by Friday, actually. Yeah, Friday morning. We'll see. I'm going to try. Otherwise, we can just use the black and white mats. It's not a huge deal. It's not like we don't have something to use. All right. So I'm going to be putting the chicken in the oven in just a moment as soon as it beeps. And cooking those sweet potatoes. And my daughter's going to make some mac and cheese to go with our lovely meal. And we're going to just have a relaxing evening at home. And just probably fall asleep on the couch watching something and then go to bed exciting life of a teacher especially this time of year all right i'm gonna say good night and i'll see you in the morning mm -hmm.